Hello, this is Game Pass Ghost, and welcome to Game Pass Gems Episode 2 with Rubber Bandits by Fleshbulb Games. Although euphemistically named, Rubber Bandits is an excellent short puzzle title available on Game Pass right now. But short load times are sure to be your next party game favourite, or just something to do in between jobs. So we're trying out a new way of breaking up the show today. I'm going to break it down into different sections so that you guys can see what you like from each game. This section here regards story. And what little there is of it in Rubber Bandits can be accessed through the main campaign. Whilst not groundbreaking in length or content, Rubber Bandits does some fun things with the title. It's reminiscent of early 90s puzzle titles where you had to complete the previous level in order to move on, a concept that has been brought back to life recently by the LEGO title. And like those titles, this game leans heavily into the wacky, fun nature of its gameplay. Speaking of gameplay, I just wanted to take a second to highlight it, as this title does what few other titles in this vein are able to do. It takes the core cops and robbers aspect of the gameplay, and the repeating cycle of trying to steal 10 gold from a location over and again, and adds new things, new problems, and new solutions every single time you spawn into a world. The game engine is well crafted as well. You may have noticed me struggling to escape from my cell due to the width requirement a moment ago. <laughs> and here I am running away from a ton of these cops all at once. And whilst I happen to know that trained SWAT teams don't just waddle after the person they're chasing in a straight line, <laughs> it makes for some hilarious results in this title. One thing I loved was the way that what appears to be haphazard planning on both parts, the uh, rubber bandits and the police force here, has resulted in the absolute mania of these levels. When it comes to difficulties, I only really want to discuss difficulties I had when playing this game, because I enjoy quality analysis and reviewing these titles, and I think that QA is merely the process of making something better, it's never a damning with faint praise situation, and Flashbulb Games have done an excellent job creating a puzzle title that I would recommend to people everywhere. My only real difficulties came late in the game when, out of nowhere, the SWAT team decided to circle the wagons, and uh, I got stuck in a sticky situation. <laughs> Luckily, we had some power-ups on hand, again, showing off the passive nature of not only the weapons that you can find on the map, but also passive power-ups that clearly a lot of thought has gone into. This isn't your average jail heisting game. However, I enjoyed that aspect as the late game really does force you to improvise. Some of these missions require you to think. So there are a couple of things I find impressive in this title that I really wanted to highlight just to give the time of day. So as you may have noticed, all of the levels are of a similar setup. You and up to three friends try and grab 10 cash units from the ground and then escape, while the police are going to try and stop you shortly after the level begins. This is where it's going to make it sound like I'm Billy No Mates, but I played this game through solo and I found it a uniquely interesting experience. Yes, although you don't have any friends to help you deal with the horde of police officers that start hunting you down after five minutes, you also have to think more and the levels are all possible. I did complete them with a minimum of effort. That said, it still took a lot of effort on my part to finish the later levels and the difficulty curve is there for people who like to endure a little bit of a struggle with their video games. That is until you break out the Iron Man chest laser and all of a sudden everybody's out of the way. This is also an excellent game for people who are perfectionists like me, as you can run the game over and over and over again until you complete the level with all of the cash. I always want to shout out the level designer here, because it has a lot of moving parts that you may not see in some of these smaller indie titles usually. Take note of this next level. It's a variation on the previous level, but instead of you having to puzzle out how to drop the cash from a bug, this time there's a god. How do you do it with the god? Will that sound an alarm? How are you going to deal with the escape if he does sound the alarm? Whatever you do, I recommend that you don't do what I do here and take on a grown man with a shotgun by flailing wildly and ineffectively at him. All jokes aside though, the company have done something fantastic here, which is make a game that, although it's the same core loop over and over again, I found enjoyable enough to complete the entire campaign in one sitting, which took me about two hours. This title managed to capture my attention for the entire time, and I really did enjoy getting capture. I can only imagine the experience would have been heightened if I'd had people outside, say, to hold off the cops or take care of business while I'm heisting inside, or secure the exit for a fast getaway. That said, playing solo was an excellent experience, and I definitely recommend you pick this up just, you know, for a taste breaker between games or something fun to do. This next section is generational comparison. Just, you know, talking about the differences and whether or not it will run on your old system versus your new system. For the longest time I was running an Xbox 360, and that includes long, long, long after the Xbox One came out. We're talking about two years, so, you know, if you're at that point, I feel you. <laughs> this is the most visually intense and demonic level in the entire game, so as you've noticed, it should be able to run 
pretty much anything you're thinking of. Lights go out, SWAT teams roll up, and I've already smashed everything in the place as you can see. None of this really caused a lag or a delay in any of the gameplay. Whilst I'm a huge, huge fan of Gang Beasts and don't really think anyone's going to come for the throne in that regard, I am interested to see where the direction goes here. If Rubber Bandits becomes a seasonal game, are we going to see some updates where potentially we get some cops and robbers where the bad guys, or I guess the good guys, <laughs> are played by other players? That would make for some very, very interesting gameplay, especially where there's flamethrowers involved. If you know me, you know I'm a sucker for a sweet message and trying to help people. I happen to use video games as part of my mental health toolbox when I'm feeling low, and, you know, if there's something I can do to help you guys too, then I would be very, very appreciative of that. One thing to keep in mind when you're playing this through is, I failed more levels than I actually won. Uh, <laughs> no one gets it right every time, no, no answer that you get the right answer, and every time you play through one of these levels, you'll find you'll be dropped with new items, new new methods and ways to solve all of the problems that are handed to you. If you think about it in that regard, every time that you do end up passing a level is the right way of doing it for that moment. Next time you do it, you might be able to solve it a different way or do something completely different. Who's to know? For instance, I would not recommend doing this level, throwing the bomb on the ground and then running right beside it. I jest, but being forced to use that mindset of no one solution is the right solution, there's no one right way to do anything, just thinking on the fly and adapting, it helps bring back a sense of excitement rather than dread at the thought of a situation becoming uncontrollable. Just a couple of quick thoughts before I let you all go and download this game off of Game Pass onto your Xboxes. I really enjoyed the way that this title came together. It may not look like your cup of tea, but this charming little adventure is definitely worth a try. I mean, I sat down and thought, hey, here's a fun one that I'll review for five minutes and then finish the game. There are titles that I love that I haven't finished in one sitting. I happen to think Malaka is a fantastic title and one that I'll be definitely doing a video on in the future. However, I still did not finish that one in one sitting. Meanwhile, this title, although yes, the levels are continual and designed to keep you playing, it's still a long enough period of time that you sit there and think, my god, how long have I been watching these guys waddle around for? Shouldn't that guy I'm playing as already be in jail? How's he out on the lam? Where are these police coming from? How did they just appear from the sky though? Are they Superman's friends? And does nobody else see that experimental test turbine in the middle of the room? I mean, I clearly didn't. If nothing else, go and download this title so that you can see a masterclass on how level design can elevate your game. This game has such a simple premise. The AI is not genius, it doesn't do anything absolutely wild, they follow you in the same straight line that you would expect from an early 90s game with people that follow you. But it still creates an experience that I would like to play and would love to continue playing with other people, with friends, at a party, and isn't that the core nature that's at all of us gamers? Just wanting to play something with a friend of ours? Another nice part about this, and another thing that gives it a good mark in the party category, is there's very few barriers to entry. You rotate the stick, your character moves. You press a button, your character uses the weapon. You press another button, he throws whatever he's holding. These are not groundbreaking core concepts of physics-based games. We've seen them before in games like Fall Guys, like Gang Beasts. What this game really does well, though, is it builds and builds and builds and uses portions that you've seen from prior, earlier levels, and then gives them back to you in a different nature. For instance, here, in the final level, you may notice some slight changes. Items still appear on the floor and teleport in as they would if you were on another level, but now there are power-ups hidden on top of columns. Now there's money that drops from the ceiling, and the game won't continue until you've eliminated all threats. And unlike a story-based game that's going to ruin you for possibly the next two weeks with a half hour of your favourite character dying over the credits, this game does simple things, and it does them well. You get the cash, you get in, you get out, you buy new skins. Hell, even Fortnite hasn't figured that one out yet. <laughs> Although I could probably go on for hours about the genius of some of the levels in here, I'll leave you with this. It's a clip of me and my least favourite level in the entire game. Oh, I don't know, anything with an absolutely massive conveyor belt? Just, just can't do it, man. Just can't do it. Overcooked so it has a series of similarly frustrating levels, and if you don't believe that I'm terrible at them, go ask my missus. <laughs> As always, I hope you like this Game Pass Gems Edition. 
feel free to leave a like and a comment and a subscribe if you are feeling generous. <laughs> Remember to be kind to one another and whatever you're doing, just keep pushing it forwards. Let me know if there's any games that you want me to release or hey, send me a copy of your indie game. <laughs> I'll give it a go. Thanks very much for sticking with me. Cheers.